All right. So, solubility KSP part two. Uh, we we actually did the first two pages, and then I think the third page is what we're on, where it talks about calcium fluoride. So the one big point I tried to make yesterday, your first step, always write your equation, always showing solid to aqueous. Yeah, let me put a two there. Can you guys see okay or you need a light on? If you can't see, just start talking. Let me know. This what I just did, so, sorry, I can't see my page numbers. We are on page 33. This step, every problem you do on the homework, on the worksheet, always start with that on the exam. Um, and then it wants us to figure out how many grams. So we must know the KSP. So you want to go to your chart find calcium in the chart. I have not talked about the last page, the appendix K. So we must be on appendix J for Joyce. Or anybody else who has a J name. We find calcium fluoride and, oh good, it's the same that I have. We said this is X, the calcium, and the fluoride then must be 2X. So if it is, only thing that you have present is the calcium fluoride. If that's all there is, you haven't mixed something else in, they are stoichiometrically related. One is X and the other is 2X. And then we plug in. So we'll have X times the 2X squared, and that will give you 4X cubed, and you solve. If you want, you can go ahead and solve. This room's like 10 degrees warmer than next door. I picked my Yeah. There was a question Aaron asked me earlier, and it was a problem I did yesterday. And he was asking me where I got the KSP from because he said he looked up the KSP and it was a different value than I gave you. And I did mention this yesterday. KSPs are different in every book you look. Um, and so that problem I had gotten from a different book and it had the KSP in it. On your worksheet and on your exam, I will give you KSP values so that we all have the same value. Um, on your homework, use the chart. I use the chart that I gave you in the notes. Um, it's because KSPs are temperature dependent, pH dependent, um, and they're really a lot of wiggle room, the hand waving. All right, you solve, you get your X. When you solve for X, 2.14 e to negative four. My question is, what are the units of that? Is it molarity? It is in unison. They all say molarity. So moles per liter. Yeah, I'm dressed as a mermaid, but my mermaid tail keeps coming off. So that's why I'm shuffling around. Mermaids don't really walk. All right. Um, that is moles per liter. So that's also a big point to realize that in this expression, it is moles per liter. So you're gonna change your moles to grams. When you go to grams, it has to be the whole compound. So you have to add up the calcium and the two fluorine. All right, and I gave you a volume, I did. 
you want to multiply by the 0.5 liters. So this number, the X is always that many moles per one liter. Uh, most of you get that. It is always per liter, so that means one liter. I leave that one off, but it might help some of you. You have to multiply by the 0.5 liters to cancel the liters out, and you end up with grams, and you're gonna end up, a reminder from yesterday, you end up with this number, 0 0.0084. Sorry, that blue pen is fading. I'm going to be asking you to change your units into the most appropriate metric. So to move the place value three, so it's 8.4, that would be milligram. Now, some of you are really good at this, um, but you can think about it. There's one gram is a thousand milligram. You, if nothing else from all of 221, 222, 223, Hopefully your metric skills have become better. But the answer is 8.4 milligrams would dissolve, which is really small. This is a 0 0.0084. So on the scales, again, that's like one or two granules. It's gonna dissolve in half a liter. In your bottle of water, you're gonna get like two granules. If you added sugar to your water, you can almost add a whole bag of sugar and it keeps dissolving. So these things are not soluble. They're always just a wee bit. All right, we're going to do B. And I'm just going to walk you through the steps. I'm not going to go through the whole solving. Is there a question before I do B? All right. So for A, we got 8.4. And we went through all these things. That was A. On B and C, it is a common ion. And it is that we add 0 0.010 molar calcium nitrate. Now, for those of you who were here yesterday or who listened, what do I do with the nitrate? Get rid of Nick. Get rid of Nick. So Nick's over on the bed right now, hanging out with Red. Um, 1A, so sodium, potassium, lithium, and nick, nitrate. Um, they never influence our reaction. Same with hydrogen. So hydrogens you would throw out. All right, so this is my calcium, 0.01 molar. My fluoride is just X. If you know one of them, they are not stoichiometrically related. It's just X. So you would set up that your KSP is equal to the 0 0.01 times x squared. Keep pausing because this is, ends up being your biggest question when you do the study set and the worksheet. Um, again, if you know one of them, they're not stoichiometric, so the other one is just x. If you don't know either one, then they have to be stoichiometrically related. So if one's x, the other's 2x. All right, you solve for x, and then you go through all those steps the same. I'm sorry. Was that right? The thing about this. We solve for x. I, I apologize. I didn't write my number down. So maybe this one. There's my calculator. We solve for x. We have an extra step on this one. We can go through it. Whoops. I couldn't do a square root in my head. So 6.24 leads to negative 5. Now, that is moles per liter. However, I want to add a piece. I was being a little slacking on this yesterday. I was hoping somebody would call me on it. I was kind of waiting for it. This X is just the fluoride this time. All the other times, it was like the calcium or something like that. 
And because the calcium is stoichiometrically the same as the calcium fluoride, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I just automatically went to the calcium fluoride. But on this one, you will have an extra step. You have to have two moles of fluoride for every one mole of calcium fluoride. And then one mole of calcium fluoride is so many grams. And those last two steps are the same. We'd also bring in the 0.5 liters. So this is the whole calcium fluoride. When you do mass, you cannot get the mass of just one ion. As a solid, they are always partnered. They become ions only when they're aqueous. So again, this side of the equation is aqueous. And you would go through and solve and This is like around 79. I'm just doing it real fast. I'm used to having like a nice big desk in front of me when I'm teaching. They may punch it in and get my number. Or you're all just, if you're playing along at home, you can be like, try it. It will make a difference on your test. All right, we do get my number. So 0 0.00123, I think it was. Um, if you guys want to give everything the three sig figs, that's great. This is grams. So again, we'll go to milligrams, 1.2 milligrams. So if we move our place value three, that's milligrams. Um, practice with metric. That's part of the thing with this chapter. You want to be comfortable with metric. All right. I will be asking you if your answer makes sense. Le Chatelier's, if we increase the calcium, we added calcium a lot more than what we had before it was negative four moles per liter. It's gonna shift reverse. That means this is how much dissolves, right? So less dissolves because it's shifted reverse. Same thing would happen on the next one. Even less dissolves on the next one when you add fluoride. Um, couple things, the fluoride is always squared. But again, if you know one of them, you don't double it. Stoichiometrically though, the fluoride we do have to factor in. Is there a question? You guys can do C on your own. Oh, see, I, I did D. Does your answer make sense? Questions? If you want, you can try C while I'm erasing the board. Or, um, yeah, I highly recommend you want to do your homework sets twice. The study sets do Wednesday. Thursday's kind of a really easy day. It's a catch up day for Friday. That's the day when you want to go back and do them again or redo your notes. And, yeah. You guys can keep finishing seeing it's my answer. I'm just writing out all your numbers that were given in the next problem. So again, we're on page 33, sorry, um, which was the page I skipped yesterday. And 
This question is worded one of two ways, so make sure you always read the question. Um, and I actually showed it the two different ways. So which of these is the most soluble? And it has to do with what KSP is telling you. If we think about it with the silver iodide, right, we have the solid always to the aqueous. The KSP would be the silver times the iodide, right? The KSP is telling you how much dissolves. It's a measurement of how much is aqueous. So this is my largest KSP. That means this is the most that dissolves or most soluble. So the larger the KSP, more dissolves, because that's what KSP is telling you. So that would be the most soluble. So now the opposite question, which is the least soluble, is which one has the most solid or precipitate? Um, and that would be this one least soluble because it's the lowest KSP, which means the most precipitate. The lowest KSP means it shifted the most in the reverse direction. You have more solid than the other ones. This question is really the defining question of all these notes and of your homework. It allows you to understand that you fully understand what these KSP values are telling you. Now, there is a comment then that it says you cannot compare them. You can only compare them is how I should have said it if they have the same ratio, meaning these are all uh, one cation, one anion. So the problem at the bottom is just the silver chloride with silver chromate. And the silver chromate or it's KSP. So we're just comparing these two. The problem is when you split this, the silver chloride splits into silver and chloride. One would be X and the other would be X. This would be an X squared problem. But this is going to have a 2X and an X. So this is going to be a 4X cubed problem. You actually have to solve for x and then compare the x's. The x's tell you how much did dissolve. So on the first question, they were all x squared. You don't have to solve because you're solving them all the same. But here you have to solve for x. If the ion ratio differs, it actually tells you this in the notes. And I don't know if I solved it. Um, oh, I did. I'm going to switch to black. I ran out of pens today. Uh, when you solve for x, the first one you get x equals 1.3 e to negative 5. And the second one you get x equals 1.3 e to negative 4. All right. So if you go back and look at the KSPs, the silver chromate, the KSP, like if you just did it, you were just guessing, you'd say, oh, that's smaller, that's less soluble. But when you solve for the X, because this would be a cube root, this one is actually more soluble. So if you're ever in doubt, solve for X. Question? I'm going to move on if there's no questions. I'm going to erase. All right, so we're on page 34. Oh, 
we can do. This is, this is, these are fun. All right. Potassium chromate and lead to chloride. I am going to write out the full equation. It's up to you if you want to. We're going to actually do this two ways. Um, there's a reason I wanted to write out the full balance in that ionic because there's a question on your final. But from what I talked about yesterday, can you guys read this question on page 34? What ions are you going to cross out? Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're going to write the whole thing. We, we're going to cross out. What's the spectator ion? There's only going to be one. Is it potassium? It is the potassium. I'm going to go ahead and write the whole equation. You don't have to. You can leave the potassium out. Um, does anybody remember chromate? You, you don't get any more bonus points. You got enough yesterday, Harrison. <laughs> you can still answer my question, though. But does anybody know chromate? Oh, what a bummer that chromate is CrO4. It has a negative 2, so K2CrO4, because potassium is a plus 1. And it's added to lead 2. So remember, the Roman numeral 2 was the charge of the lead chloride. It tells you it is a solid. So we want to write that as a solid. It also tells you before potassium chromate that this is aqueous. What word tells you this is aqueous beyond the potassium? A solution of a potassium solution. chromate? Yeah, a couple of you said it one time. That's great. The word solution tells you this one's aqueous, and the word solid tells you that. All right, we're going to write a reaction. In the good old days, we put one arrow. And in our present situation, we're going to put two arrows. All right. This is a double displacement. So potassium goes with chloride. And lead goes with the chromate. Always cation before anion. Which one is a solid? And how do you know? Well, which one is not a solid? Which one's aqueous? You see potassium? You see a 1A? Anything in that first column? Or you see Nick? Nick, you gotta come over here. It's aqueous. So this reminds me of something that's going to get posted. You can do over the weekend, or you can be like, I went out of focus, didn't I? Yeah. You know, we took the focus thing off, and then it must reset at night. All right, we'll see if it focuses if I'm out of the picture. Turning the light back uh, on and off has worked in the past, I think. But we were here at night. I'll keep talking. Anyway, I'm going to be posting, and I'll probably talk about this again on Thursday, your next lab. Let's see. It might be that it's so dark. Uh, in huh? Uh, I, with the cameras, if you walk towards it and then walk away slowly, it might refocus on you. Nick. It's not liking Nick. Maybe. 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 Or I might have to call Joey. Maybe if I just put my hand over it, we can all read my lifeline. It's not going to work. I'm going to put Nick over it. You guys are all in focus. That was like an inappropriate view of Nick. I'm sorry. We'll have to edit that out. My, it's not focusing, is it? I'm going to stop the video. Sorry. All right. What I was going to say is your lab for next Monday, it's a short video. Believe it or not, I made a 15-minute video. I've yet to get to six minutes um, of me doing the lab. 
that normally takes you guys two hours uh, and has to do actually with what are called group one ions. They are lead, silver, and mercury because they precipitate with everything. Um, there, there are these different categories of way they categorize ions um, and those three precipitate everything. They're also the ones that are called the heavy metals because they bind to things in your brain, your neurotransmitters, your neuroreceptors, and then you become crazy like lead poisoning and mercury poisoning. All right, balancing, you guys remember how to balance equations, right? Way back in 221. Anyway, that was our double displacement. I know there's one question on the final, um, and again, so you don't have to do the total ionic because the spectator is what's aqueous on both sides, which is the potassium. That's going to disappear. So the net ionic will just not have the potassium. The chromate is still there. You can write aqueous if you want. You have to show the ion. The solid is still here. And then over here, the potassiums disappear again, and you have two chlorides. And the solid is still there. Another way you guys could know it's a solid, if you go to the chart, remember that chart? Potassium. Oh, it's not on the chart. Not under K, not under P, not under anything, but lead. Lead is on the chart. So this is our net ionic. We just canceled out the spectator. Um, the spectator, it's still there. It's just floating around aimlessly in the solution. So the word ion comes from Io, which is in Greek mythology or legend. She was had the affair with Zeus, and so she got cursed to eternal life. But we all have eternal life, so and it's not a curse. It's just we don't appreciate that we do have it. Um, we're going to do something called half reactions. And again, I apologize. My game is off today. Um, yeah. All right. Half reactions are, let's just write them and, and then we'll see. Having trouble finding words. We just look at each solid as their own equation. So if I just pull the solid out and break it into its ions, and then over here, I pull this solid out. If you add these two equations up, we're back to this equation, our original equation. So you just pull the solids out, keep the solids on whichever side they're on. Now, my question for you. Again, Harrison, Sam, and Aaron, you guys have many points, so you don't have to answer right away unless nobody else answers. Which one is the KSP equation? And how do you know? Anybody? For bonus point? The first one, because the solid is the reactant and the ion for the product. Who said that? Me, Margaret. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, this one, because it's going from solid to aqueous, this is a KSP, and we look it up in the back, PBCL2, 1.7. E to negative five. So here you go, Margaret, I'm gonna pick on you for a minute. The second one has a solid and aqueous. What, and if I look on the chart, it has a KSP of 1.8 E to negative 14. But the equation is flipped. So what do I have to do to this KSP? Because this equation is flipped. This is back from your first midterm. If an equation gets flipped, what do you do to the K? Don't you put it under one? 
You do. You, you invert it. So you can either take it to the negative one power, or you can do one over that. So one over this KSP would now be true. So if you flip the equation, you, you take the inverse of K. Now, if I add two half reactions to get a whole, what do I do with the Ks? Do I add them? Do I subtract them? Can't you multiply them? Multiply them. So you have the KSP of the lead chloride, and we're going to divide by the KSP of the lead chromate. So she said it correctly. You multiply, but since the other one's inverted, I'm just going to write it like that. So we have 1.7 e to negative 5 divided by 1.8 e to negative 14. Again, the other way you could say it is take the first one, 1.7 e negative 5 times 1.8 e to negative 14 to negative 1. Um, or you can write it like this. I have no idea what the number is, but I can tell it is greater than 1. I didn't write my answer down. So this answer comes out greater than 1. Again, this is back to the first midterm. And that greater than 1 sign means this reaction favors which direction? So my net it, K. It favors the products. Greater than 1. Kind of like the alligator is pointing the right way if you write it correctly. It favors the products. So then the question was, which precipitate forms? So we basically did the exact same thing I did on the previous page, but we did a much longer way of getting there. There's always more than one way. You're just, um, it's just how you show your work. So we're just comparing the two KSPs. Looking at these two KSPs, you can see the lead chromate has a much smaller KSP. So the lead chromate is going to precipitate. It's actually something I do in the lab. You get to watch the video once I upload it. All right, is there a question? We're gonna try number two. Number two is a little bit easier because the equation's written. You really miss having multiple chalkboards. There's no questions. All right. Oh, this black shows up so beautifully and it's so hard for me to erase. Right, we're going to put the squid hat on because maybe that will make me not take anything seriously. All right, so next equation. Did you guys do anything? Or are you all just sat and stared? So I'm going to write the two half equations, but you can also just from this realize, right, the silver chloride is going in the correct direction. So we would look up its KSP, 1.8 e to negative 10. The second equation is the one that's flipped, the silver iodide. Now, the reason I'm writing out the two half equations, I know there's a question on your homework and I do ask you, and I usually ask a question like this on your midterm and I ask you to write the half reactions. The piece that crosses out is the silver. It's not that it's a spectator, it's always precipitating because it's one of those three heavy metals, lead, mercury, and silver that always precipitates. It's probably why colloidal silver works so well, because it kills bacteria. It just need a small amount. It's highly diluted, um, and it kills, like people use it all over their house to kill bacteria. All right, we look up this KSP, 
and 1.5e to negative 16. My second equation is the one that we flip. So we would divide, because this one gets flipped. And again, we get k is greater than 1. I didn't punch it in. You can punch it in, because you're going to be asked to on your homework. On the homework, I gave an answer. Um, and on your midterm, it goes forward. This is the explanation. This is all you have to say. k is greater than 1, goes forward. Um, so silver iodide is our precipitate. Question. So on the second one, it just gave you the equation already there. On the first one, you had to figure it out from the words. All right. So we're going to talk about your complexion now. Um, I never realized that when you guys see me write this on the board, you think I'm writing complexion. But there is a space here, and it's complex ions. It's two separate words. So we are talking about ions. All the ions that you've been learning about usually in the first two terms and even up to now um, have been simple ions like iodide or silver. Um, but the transition metals make really cool ions, uh, and that's what's shown there. So let's just skip to the example. Copper hydroxide, this is a solid precipitate. So when it says write the KSP, this is just regular. This is just copper with hydroxide. That is a KSP. That's not a complex ion. So we look up our KSP in the back. I'm going to write it over here. KSP 1.6 e to negative 19. So again, like I was talking about yesterday, these numbers are really small. This is from the chart. And now it says we're going to write the KF. KF, that's for the complex ions. So KSP is for precipitates. KF, F stands for formation. In case you were wondering why it's a KF. All right. You could also stand for your face because that's our complexion, if that helps you. You're forming the complex ion. So, sorry, let's do our arrows lined up here. And that is this crazy formula, the copper and should have plus two. This is my complex ion. What made that complex ion? Copper and NH3, four of them. NH3 is actually a gas because that's why it smells. It's used as thick. Um, yeah, it has a really strong smell, which means it's usually found in the gas form. All right, we look up in the chart. This, Erin, was the question you asked me earlier. Are we going to, when, when do we use chart K? Appendix K, sorry. Um, this, the complex ion. You have one question in your homework with these. And it's actually good review of stuff we did two whole weeks ago when we were working with Hess's Law. All right, that's an E. The value, they may notice something about KF. It's, it's really positive. 
Yeah, it's a positive exponent. It's huge. That's a trillion. Like if you had that many pennies, you wouldn't have to go to Mount Hood, be in college. You wouldn't have to do anything. All right. Some people aren't doing anything anyway. Complex ions want to form. They really like to form. So what we're going to do is add the two equations together. I'm pausing because I was hoping somebody would say, oh, we're going to add these two together. What is the one piece that's the same in the two equations? Am I still on here? Yeah. The copper ion cancels. We bring the two equations down. You have your solid plus your four NH3s. And we're going to form the complex. And our hydroxide. I just put a parenthesis around my OH so you don't think I wrote 20 H's. Hydrides. I keep flipping the wrong side. Um, all right. So we're going to solve for K net. Did I have to flip anything on this one? And the answer is no. And it has to do, so KSPs are solid to aqueous. KFs are, you're forming the complex, is on the product side from whatever you started with. So we're just going to take the KSP times the KF. And punch that in. Again, number, I have time. One point zero nine e to the negative six. I didn't punch it in because looking at the math, the negative is bigger than the positive. My k is less than one. K less than one. What does that mean? It means it favors the reactants. Yeah. So it favors the reverse or the reactants. This is those questions from the first homework set, in the first midterm, which means we still have a precipitate. Precipitate was on the, on the reactant side. So usually the question is, if you add the NH3, does it dissolve? You would have to add a lot of NH3 and keep adding and keep adding until you get well overwhelmed the whole equilibrium. Um, there used to be an example two that I deleted from you guys. I'm pretty sure there's no example two, right? All right, any questions? That's chaos. I think these two problems are the last two problems on your homework. And everybody leaves today going, oh, wow, what did she just do? Um, and then they end up getting it on the homework. So if they're both KSPs, one of them you have to flip. KFs, though, you're forming a complex ion. All right, we did page 35, so I'm on page 36. We did questions one and three. So go ahead and look at question two while I erase the board. First thing you need to do is write your equation. So I'm going to erase if there's no questions. There's always a question after I erase. That's why I'm hesitating.
right, page 36, number two, dealing with lead iodide. So start always by writing your equation. And write your KSP. So when you come to my office hours, night, tomorrow, Thursday, at least get that far. Say, so, okay, I write my equation, I write my KSP, and let's see what it tells us. So this was a question Jim had asked me yesterday. The question just says, this is number two, sorry. Is there a precipitate? It doesn't ask how much. If it just is a question, yes, no, this is a Q problem. You can solve it another way, but I solve it as a Q problem. Um, and I, I totally know the other way of solving it. You need to label your steps if you do it in a different way. So again, uh, most of these problems have multiple ways to solve them. Just label your steps. And, and with titrations, there's a couple of people who do it in a totally different way. And some people I can follow. All right, it tells you have 1.1 millimolar. And that is how it is read, millimolar. And yes, there is such a thing. And now the planes are gonna fly overhead. What that means is you have 1.1 e to the negative three. So 1.1 millimolar, you would divide by a thousand millimoles to one mole. So a mole is a metric unit. None of you have ever asked that of me. I don't know if you asked that of your other teachers, but it is a metric unit. My squid hat's falling apart. All right, if PB is that much, there's nothing else in the problem. Only the PB I2. So the I is double that. They have to be stoichiometrically, uh, stoichiometrically related. All right, so Q equals this times this. You punch it in. If you're really fast, maybe you already solved. And we get that value. So, that's Q. Where do I find KSP? Oh, I gave it to you. So actually, my next step, remember the alphabet? We need to sing it again. You know, on the test or on your homework, if you sing the alphabet as you're doing this, it will probably help you to feel better. All right, alphabet. Can you uh, focus again? I am, but you guys know what Q is because we just solved it. And this is 8.7 e to the negative nine. All right, compare your K and Q. You don't have to see me, you can hear me. You can see the squid. Maybe that's what's freaking the camera out. Which one's bigger, K or Q? Well, they have the same exponent, so the K is bigger, so the alligator eats the K, the nose points, forward direction. The question asked, is there a precipitate? And they all said, so it's a yes, no, you have 50-50 chance. No. No. No, because forward is aqueous, no precipitate. All right. I'm going to pause us. You guys are going to move on to question number four. Write out your thing, your equation. I'm going to try and pause and see if it goes focus again. And I don't know why. We're back. And there it is without my shadow in it. Is there questions on number two? 
I'll leave it there since went out of focus. It's really hard to stay in this really small area. All right, so in the next question, I had you look at it. What spectators, what ions are you crossing out and not using? This is a big question. And again, Aaron Harrison, you don't get to answer. But if somebody else wants to tell me what ions you cancel, you just cross out and don't use. You have bonus points today. The sodium and the nitrate. Is that you again, Margaret? Yeah. But, so the nitrate, don't even write it in the equation. Cross out the nitrate, cross out the sodium. You are left with barium sulfate. Start with that. So when you see you're mixing two things, you're not writing a net ionic. You're crossing out the spectators right off and you're writing what you're precipitated because KSPs are always the solid and then you put the ion. If there's a question, please ask because you know that one or two people who watch at home, they're probably thinking the question. This one does not ask, is, it's not a yes, no, this is not a cue. It wants to know how much sodium sulfate. So the sulfate is my unknown. We know the barium, the 0 0.01, and it is molar. So if we write our KSP, do it over here. So maybe I don't make it go out of focus. Write your KSP expression. Plug in. Oh, what's my KSP? Yeah, go to the chart, see if it's the same as mine. Okay, all right, go to the chart under barium, which is under B, A, which is convenient, whoever named it. So 1.1 E to the negative 10. So again, that's from the chart. And again, on your worksheet, I gave you KSPs um, or you're solving for KSPs. And it will be the same way on the test because we all have to use the same KSP. Um, yeah, thank you for those of you who can follow instructions. All right, X is 1.1, E to negative eight. And what are the units? All of you try and copy off the board. That's why I keep pausing. You should just automatically put the units as moles per liter. X is the SO4. So that might be a good habit that I didn't show you yesterday. So this is my moles per liter. And then pause. The question doesn't want to figure out the barium sulfate. Whenever you find X, Take a deep breath and send love to everybody in the world and light and joy. And then see, what did it want us to find? It wants to know how many grams of sodium sulfate. So make sure you solve for my question. All right, mole to mole ratio. One mole of sulfate. There's only one sulfate in this formula. So one mole of sodium sulfate. So we're good. It's a one to one. And then we do our mass 142. And it didn't give us a volume. So we'll just leave it at one liter and you get 0.2. And then your teacher's going to say, let's get rid of the exponent and put a metric prefix on there. 
Or for those of you who like all those zeros, 0. 0.000016. If you want to go with the three sig fig rules and always give me three non-zero digits, that would be great. I went with two because it's KSPs and they're really imprecise. Um, so two or three sig figs. What would be the metric prefix here? Negative six is what metric prefix? Well, you guys have the answer, so probably is there, right? So you can either say MCG for micro or that sign. That is a microgram. Any questions? We only got one more. Exciting. All right. I'm going to erase. You guys can look at number five, write your equation, see what you can do. No questions? No race? Try to stay in focus. I sure hope I'm recording. Oh, yeah, that's good. Still in focus. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is Frank Six and Eight. All right. Well, what we know is it's barium fluoride. We're not mixing anything. All we have is barium fluoride. So hopefully you all did this part. Wrote your KSP. And the question wants to know how much precipitates. This is our grand finale question for the day. KSP X, it doesn't, this is X, this is 2X. This tells you how much dissolves. KSP is for the ions. It tells you how much dissolves. That 1.1111111 grams, we have no idea how much of that went into solution because it doesn't say it dissolved. It's not like on the very first page where it said the solubility is this much. It just says, oh, you dumped this much in there. You put this much in there. We don't know how much of that dissolved. You can't use that mass. You're going to solve for X. So step one is look up your KSP in the chart. Double check my KSPs are all good since I had one on. Barium fluoride. It's the four X cubed problem, because we have X right times two X squared. So the two and the X are squared times the other X. All right, you rearrange sulfur X. I don't care if you show it in scientific notation, that doesn't have a lot of zeros, but once you start getting to like three, four or five zeros, we should use scientific notation. And we can, we're going to go to grams. This is how soluble it is. So that's my barium, that's my barium fluoride. So 175.3. A reminder, when you solve for X, it is always per one liter. So I'm putting the one there. And we get to grams. 
at 1.02. That is not our answer. We still have one more step. This is why it's the last question. And this is again, how much dissolves. KSP, the X always tells you how much is aqueous. This question wants to know your precipitate. The only way you can find the precipitate is you must subtract. And here's the key, in case you haven't figured out, your teacher is me, rainbow squid, mermaid. I'm a stickler for units because you probably figured out in the titration or buffer stuff, if you're not showing units, you end up all over the place. Um, and same with this. So this step is a subtraction. To find the precipitate, you must subtract. So 1.1111111 grams, that was total or to start or initial. Or you can say total. And then we're gonna subtract the 1.02 grams that dissolves. And that will give us 0.0. PPT is just my abbreviation for precipitate because I have trouble spelling it. If you want the full point, you got to show or full credit on a question. It will, you've got to label your steps. If the sequence is not obvious, please number your steps. So state our formula, we solved for X. We did our little factor label, we found this number, and now we're gonna subtract. Questions? That's all I got for today. So the study set and worksheet are due Wednesday. And what is happens if you turn it in late? you lose a point, but just turn it in on time. Just turn it in on time. Or you can come to lecture and answer a question and get back that point. Or these folks are here, they all got like 12 points on, or come to office hours and have me check it. I recommend, so tomorrow there's new notes. We're gonna actually go into entropy. Entropy is not on this midterm. Um, it's on the next midterm. I wanna also remind you for those of you here and those of you who listen, your class presentations are next week, your first round, which is the famous chemist. So I would use this weekend wisely, as in write your paper. Um, but this week I would focus on getting your KSP or titration buffers and just do amazing on your tests. And great. Any questions? before I go off my recording.